One of the things I'm most proud of is our mental health department, where we provide low-cost counseling to special needs individuals and their families. During times like this, this is something that everyone can use. Hello! Hi! Hello, welcome back to the Art of Music! My name is Judy. I'm Aviva. And we are the music and art directors at the Ed Asner Family Center. Super. And we're so happy to be back with you. We're beautiful, beautiful scenery. <laughs> and we're ready to sing the hello song. So grab your shakers. Here we go. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Center's musical show. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, my forever friends. Come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Center's musical show with Judy and Aviva. That's me. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Oh, we're gonna have some music and some art. I'm so excited. We're gonna have some fun today, today, today. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the Center's musical show. Oh, yeah! Come on! Let's go make some crafts. Hi, guys! Hello! Welcome to the garden! Thanks uh, for joining us. It's so beautiful here. <laughs> I can't wait to be a part of all of these beautiful, and pollinate and be a part of this ecosystem of beautiful flowers. Yeah, you can pollinate my, my, my flowers. That's I am right. the garden. Judy is our bee here. Bees. A beautiful bee. Um, today, we are going to be talking all about nature and gardens and celebrating springtime. And that reminds me of last week how we talked about women and celebrating women and all that they do for history and uh, our economy and all that things and all those things. But now we're gonna focus on nature and what nature does for all of us. Yes, I'm so excited. We have so much in store for you guys. A lot of music, all about nature and a lot of art that's gonna be a lot of fun and sustainable projects. It's keeping me very busy, busy, busy. Very busy <laughs> planning this day. Just expect a lot of puns <laughs> as well. <laughs> so if you have a favorite flower or favorite outdoor plant, please comment them below. But come along with me. We got some songs to sing. Come on. Mm. All right. The first song I have for you today, it's called Each of Us is a flower. All of us grow differently. All of us have different colors. All of us grow at different times, different seasons. So if you have any fun instruments with you, you can dance or sing along. It goes a little like this. Each of us is a flower growing in life's garden. Oh, each of us is a flower. We need the sun and the rain. Oh, each of us is a flower growing in life's garden. Oh, each of us is a flower. We need the sun and the rain. Oh, sun, shine your warmth on me. Bye. 
Christ, come on. La, 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 la. Sing it, sing it. La, 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 Sorry, we need the sunshine, which we get a lot in California, as well as we need rain. Something that you can make at home with different products or different, this is just a, a paper towel roll that I'm using as the base. And I put some, some beans and some rice inside to make my own little rain stick. So this is as important as to have sunny days and beautiful weather. It's really important to have rain so that we can grow. So if you're gonna make this and you can join along with more music, the next song I have for you is a little Beatles song that I love to sing. The Octopus's Garden is a little different, right? We might be a little underwater, but we're still enjoying the beauty, what it is to have a garden, and how beautiful it is to see all the flowers, how calming it is, how relaxing it is, and how fun it is. So if you know this song, sing along with me. I like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Oh, he let us in. Nowhere we've been in his octopus's garden in the shade. Viva, because I know that she has some fun crafts to do. But maybe while I'm going over there, you can think of your favorite garden song or your favorite flower song. Welcome back, Julie. Welcome back, friends. We are going to be doing something so wonderful today for today's um, art portion of our music and art show. And we see all of your comments, just to let you know. Hi, Aww, Lisa. Thank Thanks you, Lisa. The compliment. So, so nice. We can see all of your compliments. And just like Judy said, think about your favorite nature song, flower song, and write it in the comments below so we can see and maybe get inspired later on. Mm -hmm. Maybe listen to some nature jams. Um, yeah. But speaking of jams, fruit, vegetables <gasps> made out of jam. <laughs> You like my segue? I do. I like it. <laughs> all right. Today, we're going to be doing um, natural dyes. We're making all different types of natural Ooh. dyes. Because in our craft stores that we usually go to, a lot of our products that we use, our materials that we use, are made out of toxic and sometimes harmful in, um, materials for our environment. So we are going to be using all natural, 100% clean um, materials 
for our dye today. So we are going to be getting really down and dirty in the nature materials, our natural um, uh, tools that we've got here. Now that's um, the bees wax. <laughs> the bees knees. The bees. I think that's the same. Yeah, the, the bees wax. <laughs> that's the bees wax. Bees, it's a good, it's also a natural thing. Yeah, beeswax wax. is also used for lip balms. So you're right. Lots of good materials are made out of bees products. So we are going to be talking about a few of the materials that we're going to be needing and we can get started afterwards. So just to make sure you're prepared, you want to make sure that you have our three main ingredients that we're going to be using to dye today. So our first color, our first material for our first color is going to be grass. Ooh. Our second material is going to be um, turmeric or turmeric. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can say it. And then finally, purple cabbage. So if you want to comment below and try and guess what colors these products oh. are going to make, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise. Okay, so we've got our ingredients. And then for our little helper ingredients, we are going to be needing a measuring cup to help us kind of funnel in our dyes once, we've, once we're all done mixing them. We're gonna be needing jars to contain our dyes at the end. We are going to be needing some type of fabric or I'm using paper towels today to test our dyes once we're done. And finally, some cheesecloth for um, actually straining our thicker bits of our mixture at the end once we're done cooking down our materials. So. We're gonna get started and yeah, let's do it. So here are all of our materials. So we've got our grass, we've got our turmeric, we've got our purple cabbage. And so what we're going to do today is we are going to make sure that we have enough space, first of all. And we are gonna talk about each material at a time because they all have to be cooked kind of, they all get um, cooked a little bit in a, like a similar way. And some are cooked in a different way as well. Maybe you need more time, sometimes less time. So we're gonna start with our grass dye today. So have you ever noticed that when you are out on the soccer field and you are playing and you have maybe like a lighter color fabric on and you scrape your knee against the ground, you get kind of a cool green um, scrape, you know? It's a cool kind of, um, I guess a lot of people wouldn't call it cool because it's a, it is a stain at that point. But today we're using those natural green dyes, which is called chlorophyll in grass, and we are going to be making dye out of it. So for grass, you're going to need about way more than this. You're going to need about five cups of fresh grass. And so finding your measuring cup, you're going to measure about two and a half of these big old jugs of grass. And you want to make sure that bits like these, these drier pieces won't, um, won't create as much chlorophyll, as much green coloring as a fresher piece of grass would. So make sure that your grass is really nice and fresh. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to take a pot, which I've got right here. And we have been boiling our grass here for about 20 minutes. You can do even longer if you want a little bit more of a more pigmented color and more a brighter color of green. So we've got this pot that's been boiling for about an hour now. That's why it's so, so green. And we are going to take it and strain it into our little jar. But before we do that, we wanna talk about some of our other materials that we got as well. So I did, if you guessed green, if you guessed ga grass is gonna to turn to a green dye, you are correct. But a very unique green. Yeah. So cool. It is, it Almost will... reminds me, when you do get grass on your pants, mm -hmm. that, those green stains. Almost electric green. And yeah. we could take our fabric here, our little paper towel that we've got. It's not quite fabric. And we can dip it in and see Ooh. what color it makes. See, it turns Ooh. into this kind of like yellowish green. It's not quite fully green, but it's something along those lines. And when you use like a sock or yarn or however you are dyeing these materials or whatever you're using to dye, it will turn out to be like a nice yellowy light green when you're done. So we're gonna put that aside for now. And we're gonna move on to our next ingredient. 
our next dyeing product, which is going to be turmeric. Turmeric. And so turmeric is a ground um, herb that you can use. And it's used in a lot of delicious Indian cuisines. And it's such a really, it's like a really pigmented um, type powder. of powder. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing is you are taking your turmeric and you are going to be boiling your turmeric into hot water. This pot pan is not hot. So if all of you guys wondering why I'm touching it, you want to be careful around a stove. So you want to make sure that you're boiling your turmeric for about 20 to 30 minutes. Because it's powder, it's a lot easier to really sink into the water than um, usually something like our grass dye. So for our turmeric, you're going to want to boil it for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then you want to submerge your fabric into it and boil it for at least an hour because that's how you really get this nice, beautiful yellow. Oh. This yellow is so beautiful. It's almost like canary yellow. It's so pretty. Um, and, you know, we on one of our past crafting videos, we did dye socks with a turmeric dye, and it was so beautiful. I still wear them to this day with my yellow outfits really is a pretty um, alternative if you're trying to tie dye. I definitely suggest trying out to use trying to use turmeric instead of those yellow dyes that you can get in any type of craft store. So we've got our green and we've got our yellow. And then for our final color, which is my personal favorite, we are going to be dyeing with purple cabbage. And purple cabbage ugh, just by itself is so delicious mm. to eat on its own, but also the most beautiful shade of purple. And so you can guess that our next color is going to be purple and not quite purple. It's more of like an indigo or a violet because what you're going to be doing is you are going to be taking your cabbage and chopping it up into fine pieces. You want to make sure that it's nice and chopped. And just like an onion, it's filled with all these beautiful layers. So when you cut it up, I sound like Shrek right yeah. now when it's I like say a, that. It's like a birthday cake. <laughs> it's like a birthday cake. It's got layers. <laughs> no, like an onion. <laughs> oh, okay. So when you chop it, it makes it a lot easier to chop because it does kind of just fall apart the more that you chop it up. Um, so you are going to chop it up, put it into your pot of boiling water, and you are going to be adding about a few cups. It doesn't have to be super um, exact when it comes to your water. You just want to make sure that you have two to one ratio. So a lot more cabbage than water. So half, half of your pot with water, other half filled to the top with cabbage. Because as you boil it, which will be quite a while. This one takes a lot longer than some of our other dyes that we've made. So this pot of cabbage dye actually does take about three hours if you really want the Whoa. most pigments out of your cabbage dye. So you wanna make sure you're dyeing it for quite a while, I mean, boiling it for quite a while before you actually use it. Because you can see here, hopefully it's not too shadowed, that we have now drained all the liquid out of our cabbage. So it's really just like cabbage beef jerky right now in the middle, <laughs> filled with water at the bottom. And not just water, it's our purple dye. Ooh, now so, that's my favorite color right there. Look at that color. It's like a midnight purple, almost like a periwinkle. Ugh, it's so pretty. I'll be using this later to maybe dye like a pillowcase or something because it's so beautiful. All right. So today we have you, we have made green dye. We've made yellow dye and we've made this beautiful lavender. So the best way to strain it is to use our cheesecloth. So make sure you have a paper towel on deck because you will be needing it. And I'm also going to be using another tray to really make sure that we've got no spills happening. So I'm going to make sure that all, thank you, Judy. Um, we are going to make sure that we can no spill. So you're going to take your little jar that you've got and all you're going to do is you are going to, I think it's easier, before you actually pour it into the jar, you want to pour it into this. So Judy, could you be my helping hand yes. and hold our cheesecloth? Cheesecloth is kind of like a, um, 
um, like a netted material that helps capture all those extra bits that we don't really want in our dye because those can kind of dry onto our clothes that will come off, but this makes the dyeing process easier. So Judy with two hands is going to hold it. And if you don't have two hands with you, you don't have a someone with you that can help you out, you can always use a rubber band around it. Mm -hmm. So starting with our purple, we are going to be dot pouring it in. And usually this has actually been in this pot for a minute now. So all of our cabbage is kind of condensed and staying in there, but you really want to make sure you're swoop, whoop. Yep. That's why we have our tray. <laughs> you want to make sure you're really squeezing out all that beautiful pigment. Those, all those dyes we've got in there. Oh, all of those cabbage juices. It does make kind of a stinky smell. not going to lie. So make sure that you have some windows open before you start boiling your cabbage. Whoop, whoop. And that's why we have our cheesecloth. So you can also take your cheesecloth, if you've got those extra bits, make a little bundle and squeeze out those extra bits Ooh. of dye. And so we'll we'll be doing the, for that for the rest of the cabbage bits because it makes this beautiful purple. And now you have the perfect spout to pour it into your little jar. And you can see we've got a perfect little dye ready to go and you can see it's so dark this color it's i am just so so happy with the way that this one turned out so we have our indigo and we can go on to our grass which is going to make such a lovely color as well and so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same process again judy maybe you can get our jar ready to go for us open that up cheese cloth this bad boy all right let's put this guy over here a lot of people use cheesecloth also for like mummy mummy Ooh, costumes there you go so we're taking our grass dye pouring it into our little vessel here everything that we've got in there oof doing the same thing once again with just these extra bits Ooh, we got oh, a so lot much. So See? much color. Mm -hmm. It's because I added a little bit more water to this one. But then you're going to add this <laughs> green juice. Don't drink this stuff. It's probably not. It's not. I mean, like grass juice, a lot of people do take like shots of Isn't grass juice. Isn't that a certain juice. type of grass, right? Um, so. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, it's like the grass that you feed your cats. You know, I, I actually don't know the exact name of that kind of grass that you're allowed to drink. But there we go. There is our beautiful grass dye. Wow. Really so nice cool. and green. So pretty. And then to end it, we will do our final dye, which is our turmeric dye, which I'm sure would be my brother Eddie's favorite because he loves, oh, and my brother Will. They both love the color yellow. So we're doing the same thing again. And we are going to pour our yellow turmeric dye into our container. And you know, some powder will get into this through, ooh, through our little holes in the cheesecloth because it is powder and it's not thicker like grass. Whoop. So this is oh, when we wow. have our little, yeah, it's like a, whoop. so you want to take it, do a little squeeze. Don't squeeze too much or the powder will get in. All right. So cool. And there's our beautiful yellow. We're going to pour it into our little jar looks almost like orange juice. Orange juice, <laughs> yeah. So do we can move our tray out of the way, please? Yes. And we've got our last and final yellow dye. So finally, we have made all together purple, green, and yellow. And so later on in the month, when we start our in-person art classes, maybe we can try out using some of these dyes and make some lovely tie dyeing with it or even try and use some watercolors because you can totally use these in so many different ways. You can dye different pairs of clothing and you can even use your own like yarn, you know, you can make your own yarn. Judy, I know you I are actually a knitter and you would, I think making your own dye when you can't find that exact color. That's so I didn't even you know, think of that. That's actually super helpful. There's so, so much you can do. Yeah. With such a simple um, 
idea. It's like you can expand it on so many different levels from making your own shirts exactly. or socks, which I like how you said those socks, or making my own yarn. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, there's so many different ways that you can use these natural materials and make something so beautiful out of it. So that's going to be about it for our craft today. We're going to put those to the side. And but there must be so many other different things you can use, right? Yeah, and actually, I have a little chart here if we want to have a little uh, upper view of it really quick. Ooh, beets. Let's I knew that's the can... one I knew because beets, I love beets. So hopefully, you guys can see this here. Um, so we have five other, or actually, let's see, there's seven. six, seven, 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 yeah. seven different types of materials that you can use as well. So we have Sweet black beans for blue. We used red cabbage today for purple, beets for pink. It does, it, it, I've found that it does end up drying to like a little bit of like a darker pinkish brown. Um, avocado skins for um, if you want like a true pink. Yellow onion skins for orange. Turmeric like we did today for yellow. And you can also do spinach for green. Whoa. So if you have any of these materials here at home, you could totally try those. Or you can try another dyeing process that is called bundle dyeing, which is all about the process of taking a piece of fabric, laying down some flat flowers on top of it, bundling it up, and using it in a pot to steam. And it makes these beautiful flower prints on this sheet, it really helps as well if you can use like a little silk scarf or something. That's but this is so also cool. another way that you can make beautiful wow. art at home. Nature is so amazing. Like it, ha it has all these things for us. We don't have to go to the store all yeah, the time. Yeah, why go to the craft store when you can just go into your backyard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to your garden. Yeah, I love that. So <laughs> many ways to do things that are a little bit different and using the outdoors. and. Yeah. The beauty of nature. The beauty of nature. Mm. <laughs> Do you hear that? Oh, hello? Oh, I think someone wants to come join us. I know. I think I Who hear is that. I it's like I such hear. a tiny little voice. Hello? 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 Oh, hey, Judy. Hey. Funny seeing you here. Oh, well, you look beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. You're being so kind. I am just repping my flower shirt today to enjoy this beautiful spring morning. Oh, I love spring. I love flying around and seeing all the beautiful flowers and seeing them bloom, especially mm -hmm. after winter, where some things might not seem so bright and beautiful, but when spring comes, ah. Oh, everything blossoms. I love it. I love it too. I'm so excited. You know, we've actually unfortunately been spending a lot of time inside lately with mm. our current pandemic that we're in. I know a lot of people have been working from home, oh, yeah. doing online school, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of indoor activities, you yeah. know. But, you know, we, we all have to find time to you know, at least spend, at l I think it's scientifically proven that you want to spend at least two hours outdoors a week. And that that's that's just minimum, you know, that's like just walking to your mailbox every once in a while. It's just a, w a good way to just relax and look around and see all the beautiful things. Because sometimes just seeing the trees that are green and red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Judy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Judy, before we head back and talk to our good pals, mm -hmm. what is one of your favorite out? side activities. Ooh, I love walking and hiking. Oh, I love going to tall hills and looking down and seeing all and look, looking at houses or trees. Oh, I love that. But I also love swings. So going to the park Ooh, and swinging. I, that's oh, one that I, I always that. forget. I love going on swings as well. Mm -hmm. I like ones that are a little bit almost too high. Yeah, <laughs> going too high. <laughs> but 
Uh, I think one of my favorite outdoor activities is definitely going to the beach. Ooh, my whole what? family loves the ocean. So we are all about taking beach trips and spending time together out by um, uh, La Playa, mm. the beach. Just laying down and hearing the ocean is so relaxing. Some people even play ocean music to sleep at night because it's so relaxed nature is just so relaxing exactly that's why we want to spend as much time as it in out in it as possible you're right why don't we go enjoy a little picnic by the bay Judy? Ooh, that would be nice let's all right go. let's go <laughs> hi guys Ah, oh, I love when our littles come out and tell us a little story of what they like to do. I know, I love hearing from them. Mm -hmm. But as sad as it is, this is going to be it for today's show. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys had so much fun making dyes and singing so many lovely nature songs. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've been spending a lot of a lot of time indoors. So maybe I know that it's not always easy, but thinking about ways that you can take your indoor activities outdoors. So instead of doing homework inside or doing work inside, how about you go outside and you spend some time, even if it's 10 minutes with your laptop or your computer, because I know we can't always not be connected to our technology, yeah. but doing it outside, right? Aviva? Yeah, bring those in those virtual classes outdoors. If you don't have a laptop, you can bring your homework outside, like Judy said, and also maybe try making dinner and bringing Ooh. it outside and having like a little picnic. It's always so nice about... Um, it's always nice, so nice to go outside and spend um, this lovely weather um, with family and friends. Especially right now. I mean, Aviva and I got vaccinated and we waited and waited. We were very patient wearing our masks and things like that. But it's so exciting to finally smell the fresh air and to yeah. be around two people that are vaccinated and definitely having CBC say that two people vaccinated can be together. It makes us feel safer and have more fun and just know we're doing our very best to protect each other. It's true. It mm -hmm. is true. Yeah. So I'm so excited to be making these videos with you and talking about art and music and makes yeah. my day so beautiful. All right. That's the last time I'll say that. But I know that's pretty last silly. Be pun. Last be fun. But I hope we'll hop on over or fly, flap right over to our goodbye song so you can help me sing it. Okay. So come on, let's help me out. So thank you so much for joining in on the art of music. We love having you. We love seeing your comments. We love knowing what you're doing throughout your week and how you're using the music that we provide or the art we provide. So I would love to see some of your comments and your thoughts. But I can't wait to see you next week for some more fun and some more celebrations. But it's time to sing. La, la, la.